Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back to the shop, and this is episode number 12 of my exciting short subject series. And today I'm going to talk about the number 62 Sterrett Rule Holder. This is a rather obscure Sterrett tool. They still make them, and they've been making them for about 100 years. I can't imagine there's a real big market for them, but the whole purpose is to hold a ruler of various widths or lengths and anywhere from three-quarter wide like this up to one and nine sixteenths ruler in a perfectly vertical position. Pretty handy tool although I must confess I actually have never used it. I haven't owned it very long and this is the only one that I've ever seen in my travels. It weighs one and a half pounds so it is quite sturdy and tip proof compared to trying to deal with an unwieldy combination square which is quite top heavy and not too suitable for what I'm going to show you but let's take a look at some of the older Sterrett catalogs first and you can see the catalog description and there'll be some still pictures of this at the end if you are so inclined to watch. This picture is from the oldest Sterrett catalog that I own it's from 1935 and there it is they're sharing a page with another tool but it doesn't look any different than the one that I have. I don't really know how old mine is. They probably use, still using the same foundry pattern. And at that time, it was a dollar eighty-five, which actually would have been half a day's wages. So it may sound cheap now, but it's not really. Someone in the comments put the, today's value for adjusted inflation. I'll give you a close-up near the end of the video of the catalog description. And here it is in the 1976 catalog, not particularly different from the other catalog. And notice that it said this is to be used by pattern makers and machinists. And here it is in glorious Technicolor from a more recent catalog. The description is about the same and it's a rather pretty tool I think. The base was a little rusty so I cleaned it up and lapped it with some number 500 grit paper. And here is how it holds rulers of different widths and thicknesses. This is just a little 6 inch rule. But as you can see there's plenty of thread here for this to go in and out. And I should de-rust it if I knew how to. And we could use a wider ruler here such as this Lufkin. I don't have it open quite wide enough, but it certainly would work very well with any one of the standard Sterrett rulers. Always use as short a ruler as you can for stability, I would think. And this is machined perfectly perpendicular to the base. And when setting a ruler in there, this would be best used on a surface plate, but I'm just using it on the bench because, it, after all, it is what I would call a semi-precision tool. But put your rule in like this and then you can bring the clamp up but you want the ruler to be setting on the surface of the table or the plate and then just draw it up and you probably would remove the ruler to store it in your toolbox or it would be rather bulky. Love these little finger grooves in the side don't you? So you can get a nice grip on it. Who cares? If you own a height gauge, it's very doubtful that you would ever use one of these rule holders. It's kind of a redundant thing, I guess. But typically used with a surface gauge like this, and it's for transferring dimension. This is not a direct tool for measuring. We're transferring from whatever we set our surface gauge, and then we would bring it over and scribe it onto our work. There would be bluing on your work. This piece is typically mounted on an angle plate, but that's a, a typical application, and then you could scribe. In every one of the catalog descriptions, it mentions this is handy tool for a pattern maker. So these are shrink rulers here, these four, and if you do not know what a shrink ruler is, I think maybe I'll do another short subject on that. But here is a Lufkin still in the case, and the shrinkage is 3 16ths of an inch per foot. 
So shrink rulers are actually a little, little bit longer than regular rulers. And, I've, and these four or five are all different uh, for different materials that a pattern maker may be making the pattern to cast in. That is cast iron, aluminum, bronze, whatever. But if we stack them like this, you'll see that they are not all the same length. So to use a height gauge for uh, along with a, a shrink ruler would be kind of difficult because you'd have to calculate the shrink and figure out how many thousandths it is and then set your height gauge for that. But with these you could directly transfer the shrink rate from the rule onto the wood or metal pattern that you are constructing. Now most of you have never made a foundry pattern, but here it is set up with a shrink ruler with a shrink rate of, what is it, got to get my glasses on here, 1 16th per foot. And I would transfer the dimension right off of this that the blueprint called for onto either wood, again, or metal or plastic. Patterns are made out of many different materials. But Mr. Pete! That looks like kind of a useless tool. What else can it be used for? Well, it can be used to check the depth of a slot or a piece of work by loosening up the knob, moving the ruler down, and reading it right off of here. Well, isn't that kind of useless? Yeah, I guess it is because that can be done in so many other ways with this type of depth gauge or simply a combination square. And 90% of people are going to use a cheap, this isn't a cheap one, but you can use a, a rather inexpensive caliper to measure the depth. So I don't see that as a real big advantage, but that's one of the uses that is listed. But remember, years ago, a machinist may not have all of these tools. They were all very expensive, no matter what year it was. Well, that concludes this video on a rather simple tool. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you own one of these or ever actually use it. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now and be sure and watch all of the episodes of my short subject series.